We are going to get started with today's post-race media availabilities from the Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We are joined by Jeff Gordon, Vice Chairman of Hendrick Motorsports, um, which is with the winning team, the number 48 of Alex Bowman in the Ally Chevrolet. We will open it straight up to questions for Jeff. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start over here on the far left. Uh, Justin Schuler kicking the tires. Uh, Jeff, did you guys expect to kick off with this new car so strong, winning two of the first three races? I mean, you can never predict that. And this car has been very unpredictable, you know, of, of uh, the unknowns that, that, that come with it. And every track we've been to, there's been a new challenge. So um, I thought our testing showed some strengths, but, but again, it was, it was hard to really pinpoint whether or not we could, we could you know, be the strong Actually, even today, I mean, our, our, our practice times were incredibly strong, and, and I thought we were actually going to be a little bit better uh, throughout the race. Um, but um, the guys had to overcome a few different, you know, challenges along the way, and, and so I'm really, really proud of that effort. Um, you know, they, they all, every one of our guys had to fight back from something, and, and Alex, you know, went in the race. I mean, he had to go to the back of the pack because, uh, um, you know, one of the issues on, on pit road. So, um you know, you, you, you just never know with a car that is so similar to your competitors because of all the spec parts on this car. Um, you, you, you never can tell whether or not you're going to be able to, to have, um, you know, consistency of, of running up front. But, I'm, you know, I'm really proud of, of what they're doing on pit road as well as today the strategy calls in, in, in the fast race cars. I mean, what I really lo love seeing is all four of our cars being so close uh, out there on the track, because, you know, w it shows you the kind of information that they're sharing and, and um, you know, how much they're in sync with one another back at the shop when they're building these cars and setting the cars up. And, um, you know, the Chevrolets looked really strong again today, but so did the Toyotas. I, you know, they, they kind of had it there at the end, so it's kind of a bummer to see what happened to them, but I was proud of our guys for taking advantage of it. We're gonna go to Bob, Jenna, and then Jerry. Uh, Bob Packers, Fox Sports. I have two. The first, do you think the talk that Mr. H had with the drivers this week played into how they raced those final couple laps? Uh, they raced really, really hard. I know that. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, since ever w w any time when I came to Hendrick Motorsports, it was race hard, but don't wreck your teammates. Uh, you know, that, that's just, that's what you do. You want to go race your teammates for wins and, and settle it among yourself. So I thought they raced one another, uh, you know, clean, but, but very aggressively. Um, you know, I talked to Kyle Larson there at the end. He said, you know, he just was trying really hard to, to get to the outside or, you know, stay on the outside of, of uh, Alex and maybe even pushed it a little bit too hard and, and, and got the car tight. So, and, and Alex, I was talking to him in victory lane. He's like, you know, I drove in there as hard as I possibly could. I wasn't sure if it was going to stick, and, and it did. So, I mean, the conversation that, that you know, Rick had with us was, um, you know, really more pertained to what happened at the end of that race last week and, and those similar types of scenarios and, and blocking and, and um, you know, and also working through when things like that happen, how you work through it internally. And does that... Do you need all three cars to take two tires to kind of make that work at the end and, and keep anybody with four at bay? And is it eas is that an easier decision with them being fourth, fifth, and sixth rather if they were first, second, or third when at the time of that caution? Yeah, I mean, Greg and I were talking in Victor Lane. I, I think it's a little bit more dif dis difficult decision for him because he was the one furthest up that, you know, maybe four tires. They had a strong car. We're in a good position. Four tires might have been the right – way to go for them to still have a shot at winning but um, I'm really glad that all three of them chose to take two because uh, you know when you do I don't think it was planned out. I'll let Greg answer that I don't think that was planned out or, or, or discussed but maybe it was but um, I just know that that by having all three there as well as the lane choice that they chose um, I, I, I particularly look at the 24 by him choosing outside in that second lane it put that 18 I think it kind of caught him off guard a little bit too, but it put the 18 down that inside lane. We all knew he was going to try to go three wide going in the first turn, but he never got a run. Uh, those two guys got a good launch on the front. He didn't get the run. And then it sort of blocked him in there um, by having the 24 on the outside. And those two guys on uh, the front row were able to launch good and, and go settle it amongst themselves. I think we were also joined by the uh, race winning crew chief, Greg Ives. And we'll go to Jenna and then Jerry. 
harp on the um, talk that Rick had, but um, Kyle defined it as he set his expectations. He made clear his expectations. D did he need to do that? Was that needed between the guys? Well, I, you just don't want anything to fester. You know, you, you, you want to really get on top of it right away. Um, you know, a, as much as we love racing one another out there on the racetrack, there's also lines that you have to draw as teammates. Yeah. And I've been a part of both sides of that throughout my career. Um, and, and, you know, when we spoke uh, right after the race on Sunday, we knew that we wanted – and it wasn't just the two of them. It was all four drivers, all four crew chiefs, and, and you know, getting the clarity about, you know, how we, we you know, intend to um, compete with one another in, in the closing laps of, of a race. And um, it wasn't that we didn't want Chase to, to go try to take him three wide to win the race. You got to go try to win the race. But, um, you know, you just got to have as much awareness of your teammates in those situations to not, um, you know, cause damage and, and hope that you can just go, um, you know, settle it in, in a way where you guys are both battling it all the way, both of you, all the way to the finish line. And, Greg, um, after Mr. H had that talk, I'm wondering how did you see that those final two laps between teammates? Yeah, ultimately, you know, like I, I addressed, you know, the, the four teams and said, you know, there's nobody I cheer for more finishing second to us than – uh, those three teams. That's how that's how tight knit that group is. Uh, as much uh, talk and and whatnot. Uh, these guys drive hard, but they also try to try to encourage and push each other. You know, ultimately Kyle ran us hard. Uh, Alex ran him hard, but it ultimately uh, you know came out. It was a good race, good drag race to the end. So um, for us, I think they all know where wh where the limits are. Um, and you know, ultimately what happened last week. Uh, was, was something that was, can be marred as a uh, maybe a mistake or, or whatnot, not something that's uh, definitely intentional. But I, I don't, you know, amongst the crew chiefs, this this uh, this group we have with Cliff and and Rudy and Alan, you know, it's it's really tight knit. Uh, we're not going to let anything break us down. Even if even if uh, drivers had a little riff on on the track, we're gonna we're gonna figure out. We're gonna have these teams go out there compete e each week uh, to be in the top four and. Uh, you know, whoever wins that race, uh, we're just as proud. Um, I was just as proud last week with the five winning, and I'm sure it's the same way with us winning. So uh, that's that's how we operate, and, and that's how Mr. H likes it. And for both of you, um, one thing that's really stood out these last three races is uh, guys that are normally mid-pack guys are now much closer to the front. Um, is it the car, you know, wh what's done that? I know the car has, has evened it out, but, um, you know, why all of a sudden are guys that have never really been up the front? You know, Ross Chastain led 85 laps today. He did, led 75 his whole career. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the intentions of, of going to, or one of the intentions of going to a car like this. And, and I think it's been refreshing to see. I mean, I think we've seen great racing. Um, I think we've seen, you know, cars coming from the back to the front and front to the back. And, and you know, so we've, we've seen where they can race hard, but the cars are on the edge. The drivers are definitely having to show their talent and ability. And I, I think that was the intent too, was, you know, to have a car that was on a more level playing field. And so the, and, and also a car that I I'm proud of, of, of NASCAR going with the lower downforce, higher uh, horsepower for these types of tracks, because it does put it more in the driver's hands. When you see guys spin it out by themselves, I mean, we haven't seen that in years. Um, you know, you see the back of the, you know, the guys catching it and, and, you know, but yet there's, you can tell they're still pushing and, and driving hard. So I'm in incredibly uh, impressed and optimistic about what this car has to bring throughout the season as these guys, you know, continue to work on it. But yeah, it's also great to see fresh, you know, faces and names um, up front. I mean, we saw it with Tyler Reddick last week and Eric Jones and, and this week, I mean, Ross Chastain was incredibly impressive. So um, I, I, I hope we see more of that. I think that's what, what the sport you know, needs to, to continue to grow. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's an opportunity, I feel like. You know, if, if I was sitting there maybe, um, you know, in a situation where you talk about some, some driver sitting in the, the mid-pack and, and this is a new opportunity. And that's kind of how I looked at it, too. You know, it's a new opportunity to um, utilize the resources we have at Hendrick Moore Sports. But also uh, you look at some of those guys with Chevrolet uh, partnership and, uh, 
the teams that they have built around not only Hendrick Motorsports but RCR and Trackhouse, um, the the work it, it's 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 a teammate, right? So um, and ultimately that's the overall goal. So. Uh, it's not surprising that some of these drivers are up front because of the talent they have to make it to the Cup Series. Uh, I think the leveling the playing field, like Jeff said, uh, with the car allows for um, you know those guys to, to to maybe wheel it a little bit more. You know, g guys who like it on the edge and 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 can can balance that really well. I think Ross has always been that way, um, and and some of these other guys. So. Ultimately, you know, I'm just happy for our team and, and know that, you know, coming off of a four win season, our, our job or our goal was to be consistent and had a fast car in California and ultimately, you know, didn't finish where we needed to be. And, and, and this week brought another fast car and, and able to close it out. I'm going to go to Jerry and then Tom. Jerry Jordan, the Kicking the Tires.net. Uh, got a couple, one for Jeff, one for you. Uh, Jeff, uh, with Hendrick leading 51 laps. Uh, there's another hundred and two thousand uh, dollars for the donation. Uh, the, uh, in addition to the two hundred, are you part of that? And, and what are your thoughts on on that situation? Well, we're we're, we're s extremely proud to be able to to support Samaritan's Purse. Um, you know, and what's happening uh, in in Ukraine, and and so you know, Rick this week reached out to all the teams and the PR and marketing department, and said, hey, you know, I'd like to. To, to you know get this going for this week and the cars had already left uh, uh, the shop so obviously some more work had to be done to, to get um, those decals especially the one on the TV panel of the five but um, you know I think I think you know everybody in the world is is watching what's happening there and, and wants to um, support that and and so I think that was a, a great opportunity for us to be able to to be a part of that and and um, the guys leading would like to to let a little few more laps, but uh, hey, we uh, we raised a lot of money for for a great cause today, and and um, that you know we'll we'll continue to look at opportunities like that, how we can do more of that in the future. Thank you, and and Greg, for you, we're technically four races in, but three races uh, you know that count: uh, Super Speedway, then California, then a mile and a half. Have you guys found any nuances with this car uh, yet that you can benefit and and kind of parlay as you go forward? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. It's details oriented, you know. It, it continues to, to be that way. Um, you know, these the the guys at the shop at Hendrick Motorsports, um, whether it's an engine shop or or the a fab and body shop, the, they're putting in, in in putting these cars together, and it, it may be uh, considered a, a task where you just buy the panels and, and put them together. But ultimately, these guys, you know, still put the detail in, into them. Um, so th those are the nuances, right? It's not a, just about, um, you know, it, it's, it's about putting the best race car in the truck. It's not about putting together a car and, and getting the job done. So, um, you know, those <laughs> that I, I like to, you know, pinpoint and, and say it's, it's one thing versus another. Um, but these cars are very, very similar each week that we come to the racetrack with uh, the differences that we need. You know, speedway racing, you want to get the blade out of the air. Downforce racing, you want to put the blade in the air. You know, those are very simple things that uh, every race team on pit road knows about. Um, but maximizing and getting that right every week, um, you know, comes down. It comes down to the guys in the shop. You know, I'm fortunate to be uh, a, a guy that sh gets a great race car from Hendrick Motorsports. Um, Alex gets to drive it. Our guys get to uh, work on them and pit them. Um, but without those guys at Hendrick Motorsports, you know, it wouldn't be uh, possible. So. I also want to say, say, you know, Mr. Hendrick, you know, his generosity is always, always there. Um, it's, uh, you'd say it's, it's never surprising that he always steps up in the right situation at the right time for the right, right, uh, right cause. So, you know, really appreciate uh, being able to lead laps today. You know, I, I uh, wish he could have led some more, um, but ultimately, you know, he's the reason why, you know, Hendrick Moore Sports is so great and, and why these race teams work so hard. I'm going to wrap up with Tom. Tom Zaleski, I'm calling you today. Hi, Jeff and uh, Greg. This is for you. Um, the, co the final yellow comes out. How are the how are the wheels starting to spin? How are the wheels starting to turn? <laughs> yeah. Are you, what, are, you, are you prepared for this in, eventually? Yeah, or I've are been you thinking about it ahead. I've been prepared since 2020 for this one. <laughs> so, um, you know, another late caution. Uh, Alex was fast. Um, 
you know, him and, and Ryan Blaney were having a good battle. Um, caution comes out late, and, and we all like to pit, and some guys stayed out, and we made the wrong call. I made the wrong call. Uh, so we, we've talked about this redemption for a long time. You, it's something that never goes away. Uh, I may get the years messed up. I may get uh, the time messed up. But I know from 10 years from now, it's going to be the same. I made a bad call, redeemed myself a couple years later uh, on it. So, you know, we talked about it, you know, a little bit on the radio. And I'm, I'm a little bit, of a, like, like Alex says, a, a riddler. And we're kind of talking about it. This is what we talked about. We didn't really want to, um, you know, say exactly what we wanted to do. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like him in the car wanted us to stay out, me thinking, Everybody was going to come down, at least take two tires, um, and ultimately that was the right call. So uh, I got lucky maybe um, with that call and, and lucky that uh, we have Alex driving that thing and, and uh, picking it up on the restarts. He, he, had a, he had a lot of confidence on restarts all day. Um, so, you know, it, does, it doesn't come down on the last restart and say, yeah, I got confidence now. Uh, it comes down to every restart he was confident in the race car and in, in what he was capable of. And, and slowly got us to the point where two tires he wasn't going to lose. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, you know, he, he talked about his restarts and how good he felt. There's a couple times we lost some spots, but you know, not, um, you know, not to be um, one way or the other. It's just circumstances. So ultimately, yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about. You, you think about you think about the mistakes more than you think about the victories. I feel. Um, and that's where ult ultimately this decision, you know, coming down to five to go, you know, I'm, I'm prepping my guys. We're making another stop. Get stretched. Get ready. We're making, we're doing something. We're, whether it's two tires, four tires, we're getting ready to go. And, you know, I'm, I'm running fourth. Would have been happy with fourth? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, not with the car we had today, no. Right? So, uh, I was playing that scenario in my mind. Caution's going to come out and, we're going to have to make a decision. Uh, decision was two tires. It guys executed. Um, you know, we got, and, and Alex did a great job on the track. We'll wrap up with a follow-up from Bob. Uh, since you were shaking your head, so it wasn't a plan for all three Hendrick teams to take <laughs> no, two tires? No, it was not at all. In, in that moment, you don't plan, you don't have any plans with anybody but yourself. Y you know, you get as selfish as you possibly can to win a race in the last last three laps in a green-white checker. Um, Ultimately, when it came out that way, you, you try to figure out who you can work with and who you can't. Um, ultimately, for me, it was front row. If we didn't get the front row, um, we weren't going to win the thing. We are just, we might have finished second to 20th. Um, so that's kind of what my mindset wasn't planned. Um, we, we don't have time to plan that well <laughs> uh, uh, for all that. But ultimately, I know, I know, you know, the situation, the five and how Cliff things you know like I said we work together we know how he, he's got to win he's he's gonna gamble he's gonna either take two tires or stay out he pitted I knew two tires was coming so uh, same with Rudy you know trying to trying to win the race you know we have great cars capable we have the speed capable of giving us the front row and winning the thing so um, ultimately like I said we came out on top but there was no plan between all of us, that's for sure. I, I have to chuckle here real quick because we've had many scenarios where I've been in meetings after the race and go, you know, if all four of you had stayed out, you, a Hendrick car would have won. And, and, you know, and Greg would, you know, one of the crew say the exact same thing, but, but yeah, but we would have finished worse. <laughs> and it's just, you know, so, so you, as much as you'd like to plan some of those things out as a four car team, you, you just can't, not, not that, you know, short of notice. So, uh, I'm just proud of these guys that uh, that it worked out the way it did today. Proud of this guy too. That was an awesome job by Alex Bowman uh, driving the wheels off that thing. The showman in the house. Yeah, he's making me nervous. Those two guys side by side, inches away from one another, and going through the corners. Uh, I was like, oh god, oh god, oh god. But, yeah, uh, we almost had out. to have another talk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jeff and Greg, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everything you guys do for us, and uh, see you guys next week.